A news broadcast captured the moment this murderer realized he had been caught. Stephen McDaniel had been stalking his neighbor and classmate Lauren Giddings for quite some time before he decided to break into her apartment and murder her. He dumped her remains in garbage cans all around their college campus, and he thought her body would never be found. But days later, the local news arrived to do a story on Lauren who had already been reported missing. And during this time, Stephen stood in front of the camera giving an interview acting like a concerned neighbor, knowing all along that he was the cause of this. During the interview, Stephen was informed that Lauren's body had been found and we can see his world fall apart in the blink of an eye as he now realizes he's about to be caught. Ali? Had you heard, had you seen anything there? Had you seen anything there? Hi. I mean, we don't know if this is the same person. You know what I mean? Like, they took out a body there earlier. We don't know if this is the same person or not. So that's why we're trying to ask people if they know who lived there. Disturbing audio recordings that'll make your skin crawl. Part 1. American bear enthusiast Timothy Treadwell spent 13 summers living with grizzly bears until one day, him and his girlfriend were mauled to death by one. The following audio was from their final moments during the attack. In Russia in 2012, a brick fell out of the back of a truck and broke through the window of a car killing a 29-year-old woman named Olga. Her husband was driving the vehicle and immediately rushed her to the hospital where she died of a brain injury. This is the story of the haunting exorcisms of Annalise Michel. In 1968, when she was just 17 years old, a German girl named Annalise Michelle started experiencing devilish hallucinations and a voice telling her that she was damned to hell. Her mother first became concerned when she witnessed Annalise staring furiously at a statue of the Virgin Mary with her eyes turned jet black and her hands seemed to turn into thick paws with claws. She also started doing extremely disturbing things, such as licking her own urine off the floor, eating flies and spiders, and exhibiting signs of superhuman strength. A priest named Father Wren soon began performing exorcisms on her, and the following clips are from recordings of these exorcisms. So long, child murdered this drive through employee for the craziest reason. A 12-year-old boy from Texas killed a sonic drive through worker during an argument in May 2023. The boy remains anonymous due to his age but was convicted of murder earlier this month. The victim was 32-year-old Matthew Davis who was fatally shot by the boy for the most bizarre reason. The confrontation reportedly started due to a man urinating in the car park. The man in question was the 12-year-old uncle, Angel Gomez. He was confronted by Matthew for his actions and the argument got physical. The 12-year-old then got out of the car and shot multiple times at Matthew. Angel and the nephew fled the scene before returning. They were arrested and Matthew was pronounced dead. Tragically, Matthew had a 10-year-old son who is now left without a father. This is a disturbing moment when two teens laughed as he intentionally ran over a man on a bike and took his life. On August 14th, 18-year-old Jesus Ayala and 16-year-old Zimir Keys ran over 64-year-old Andy Probes as he rode his bike early in the morning. Andy, who was a retired police chief, went flying 96 feet away and was later taken to the hospital where he passed away. The teens recorded the entire thing and then posted it online where it went viral. In the video, they could be heard laughing and then one of them said, hit his ass and then they fled. Now, this is where things get super disturbing. Recently, the teens appeared in court, but as they sat there, they can be seen laughing and giving Andy's family the finger. But this was not their only hit and run. On that same day, they also hit a 72-year-old man, but luckily, he survived. And of course, they recorded that as well. But the entitlement of these teens is absolutely disgusting. One of them can be heard telling the police officer when he got arrested that he won't be in there for too long and he'll be out in 30 days. 
days. I say lock them up forever because people like this have no soul. One of the worst doomsday cults since Jonestown is currently operating in Kenya, and over 600 people are still missing. Just a heads up, this story is heavy. Rogue pastor Paul McKenzie told his followers that the world was going to end in April. He's been living with hundreds of followers on a farm in Kenya, and he told them that if they wanted to reach heaven faster, they would have to do it through starvation. And already the bodies of 200 severely emaciated followers have been found on that farm. It was recently discovered that Paul was encouraging followers to starve children first. This tactic is implemented by some cult leaders because if the children go first, then the adults are way more likely to follow. Paul was arrested last month and actually goes to court today, but he's held these wacky beliefs for a while. Back when he was a pastor at a traditional church, he told parents that educating children was satanic and very much discouraged parents from getting any medical care for children under like any circumstances. This has caused many other Kenyan church leaders to distance themselves from Paul. Hopefully his arrest will help people detransition out of the church, but there's still a lot of people missing. I haven't seen anyone talking about this podcast, but it's about one of the wildest ghost stories I've ever heard. It starts with the host talking about how when he was growing up in England, he always felt like his room was haunted. But then years later, he moves out and he finds out that new people have moved into the house and they also think it's haunted. In total, three families had moved into this house that all thought this one room was haunted, and some of them were so traumatized that they weren't able to talk about it. And that's because some of them thought they saw the ghost and it was a woman with no face. And that's where this podcast gets wild. Because the host finds out that in the 1930s, next door to this house, a woman was murdered by being shot in the eyes. There's this whole story about how her brother came back from war and was losing his eyesight and was jealous of her, so in the middle of the night one night, he shot her in her eyes. But after this happened, a bunch of people started writing into the police saying they didn't think it was the brother. They thought it was the husband who was staging it to make it look like it was the brother. So then the podcast becomes this murder mystery to try and figure out who killed the woman in that horrible way. But also it's a ghost story because it's like, was that who's haunting that house in hopes that someone will eventually try to solve her murder? I cannot recommend it enough. You need to listen to it and tell me what you think. What is the scariest thing that could happen while camping? Well, this one guy who was camping in Florida had a horrifying encounter. And before we get into it, I have a podcast episode of two of the scariest camping stories I've ever heard, if you're interested. So years ago, a guy and his friend were camping in Florida when they came upon this old man's campground. It was in disarray, so they kind of got a bad feeling from it and they turned to leave. But then the guy comes out of the campsite and is like, oh, hey, you know, he wants to talk to them. He starts engaging them. He's giving them suggestions of where to go in the woods, but he's telling them where to go in steps, not in miles or yards. So he's like, oh, the waterfall is 300 steps from here. And one of the guys thinks that's weird because that's really not common in the area to describe where to go. A few months pass and they basically just forget about this interaction. But one day, one of the guys calls the other guy and is like, dude, you have to turn on the TV right now. And all over the news are pictures of this guy, the guy they saw, Gary Michael Hilton, who is a serial killer who preyed upon young women in national parks, kidnapping them and taking their lives. Some of the places he told the boys to go look at were places he had hid bodies. Both men were contacted by law enforcement and ended up giving very valuable information in the investigation. He was vaping three disposables a day until an unthinkable nightmare struck. Ever had a vape scare? Subscribe, like, and share your story in the comments below. I might just share the most shocking ones in my next video. Now let's dive into my vape nightmare. I'm Alex Denver, a young American hook it on the puff. I was a heavy smoker and decided it was high time to quit. I started facing some health issues but never linked them to my smoking. I smoke it at least two packs a day until I ran out of money to buy more. That's when I turned to these new disposable vapes. They seemed cool with flavors like peach, watermelon, Red Bull, and even Dragon Fruit. I tried one, and was instantly hooked. I bought a vape of every flavor to try them all. I loved it and started collecting them. But then came that day. I was casually vaping on my couch when I got a weird taste from one of the vapes. Flipped upside down, the liquid oozed out, slid down my throat. I choked on the toxic, burning liquid. My parents were out, and there was no one to help. I couldn't spit out the venomous substance and choked on it. Every day, I regret abusing those vapes, and I hope they vanish from the U.S. soon. This has to be the worst elevator death of all time. This is 30-year-old Sam Weisbrun, and in August 2019, something absolutely terrible happened to him. 
He was on an elevator and when it stopped, everyone obviously got off. He was the last one getting off when for some reason the elevator door didn't close, but it still started going down and all this happened while Sam was trying to get off the elevator. You see Sam reach out with both of his arms trying to grab onto the walls, but it was no use. Sam's body was then sucked into the elevator between the elevator and the inner wall of the building, where there is virtually no room at all. In the video, you then see Sam completely fold in half. His feet are up by his face and his heels are literally touching his head. You then see Sam's body get crushed up and Sam then continues to get pulled down to his death. Now, luckily you don't see any blood in the video, but it's still one of the more unsettling videos out there. Mainly because if you just put yourself in his shoes for a second, it's absolutely horrifying. His chest was instantly crushed to the point where once it happened, he couldn't breathe at all. We can just hope that he didn't suffer that much and that it was over quickly. May Sam Weisbrin rest in peace and I can't imagine the fear and confusion he had to be feeling. I don't recommend searching for the video, but if you do, look for it at your own risk. This is a seemingly normal photo with a very disturbing backstory. In the photo on the left, you can see a man in a black t-shirt climbing up a boulder. Him and his friend had gone on this trail in California specifically to go rock climbing, but they are completely unaware that there is something awful in the background. This tiny little speck of red is actually a person. That red hair belongs to Sailor Gilliams. Sailor and her friend Brendan Vega decided that they wanted to go on this trail for a late afternoon hike. Unfortunately, they were ill-equipped. As the sun started to set and it was getting darker, they tried to use their cell phones to illuminate their path, but they both ended up slipping and falling. Brendan had only injured his arm, but Sailor had broke both of her ankles and her wrist. They decided that it was best that Sailor stay there while Brendan went to try and get help. He would never make it. On his way to try and get help, Brendan fell 20 to 30 feet to his death. This left Sailor completely alone and helpless in the dark. She lay there for the rest of the night. And it isn't until this photo was taken that the two men rock climbing realize that Sailor is laying there in the background unresponsive. Thankfully, they're able to call paramedics and Sailor is airlifted out of this area. And she would go on to survive this nightmare. This is breaking news. One of the deadliest mass shootings in American history just happened tonight. This is suspect Robert Card from Maine, and he killed 22 people tonight and injured a further 60. So I'm just reporting on this news as it comes out, but this is Robert Card. And according to reports, he's a pedophile that was previously arrested for the possession of CP or CSAM. So according to official reports, 50 to 60 people have been injured by this man and 22 people are dead. These shootings took place at a number of different places across Maine, including a bowling alley, a Walmart distribution center, and a pool hall. These are the images of the suspect that have been released, and as of the recording of this TikTok, he has not been caught yet. Apparently, local authorities have been able to locate Robert's car, but they haven't found Robert yet. And in fact, they think that he might be fleeing by boat out into the open ocean. This is Robert right here. You can search him up on the National Sex Offender Registry. He is a registered sex offender. And yeah, we're going to get more developments as this carries on. But wow, what an absolute tragic day for America. This has already become, sadly, the eighth deadliest shooting in American history. And I'm sure as the people who were wounded get treated and time goes on, it's going to grow and grow with the number of casualties. This is just absolutely tragic and Jesus Christ, I hope that they find and locate and arrest Robert soon. This is the disturbing case of the mistaken identity kidnapping. This case really does take wrong place, wrong time to the next level. On the evening of October the 13th, 2023, two brothers and their friend were sat in a car in Miami. The men were Jonathan and Jeffrey Arista and Raymond Gomez. They allegedly grabbed a victim outside of their apartment. One of the trio was dressed as a police officer and even had a gold badge and a police officer's vest. It's reported that they had fake police lights on their car. It's also reported that they forced the victim into the car and then blindfolded him. They then drove him to their Airbnb in Plantation in Miami without realising that they had the wrong man. Once at the Airbnb, they told the man that he owed them money. Shortly after this, though, they realised they had made the mistake. 
They had actually intended to kidnap their colleague, but decided to use this man anyway. They allegedly tortured him in the bathroom of the Airbnb before using him to lure in the actual intended target. Thinking fast, the victim actually called police to report a B threat in order to make sure police came quickly. This worked and police sped to the scene at 2am on the 14th of October. Raymond reportedly tried to flee but ended up crashing his car nearby and hiding in a bush. Police ended up finding him a few hours later. Jonathan was caught by police and Jeffrey was also detained. Raymond admitted to police what they had done and stated that the motive was unpaid debts. The brothers and Raymond now face charges of kidnapping and conspiracy to kidnap. They could all get life in prison. This is the diving face split video, one of the most disturbing videos on the internet explained. The video that I'm about to explain was released onto the internet in July 2009, and around September 2009, the video went completely viral. The video shows a group of teenagers having fun on a summer day. The group is taking turns jumping into the sea from an elevated surface, and it looks like the drop is about 20 feet. The first person to jump off dives into the sea completely fine and unharmed. The second teenager is then ready to jump. He stands over the drop, steadies himself, and then jumps. But as he jumps, he kind of loses his footing and completely slips. And immediately, the jumper realizes that he is in deep trouble. In midair, you can hear him panicking as he realizes he didn't clear the clearance he needed to. He then falls into the sea, but his face hits the fishing walkway below. And immediately when this happens, everybody he was with lets out an ear-piercing scream. As the video plays, the victim's unconscious body is floating in the water, and the water around his head immediately turns red. The video then cuts forward and it shows a rescue boat trying to save the jumper, and during this part of the video, the entire sea is completely red with the jumper's blood. The video then jumps again to the victim in the hospital, and at this point you can see the true nature of his injuries. And I'm telling you right now, it's horrible to look at. The victim's face was completely split vertically from the top of his forehead all the way down to his chin. And what makes this even worse is that he's still alive throughout all of this and fully conscious. During this point in the video, you can see the doctor try and hold the victim's face together, and apparently he was doing this to help the victim's breathing. Because his face was split in two, both his nose and mouth were completely destroyed, and as I said already earlier, he was still fully conscious. Despite the injury, another disturbing part about this video is that you can see the victim's eyes darting across the room in complete shock, pain, and panic. One of the doctors can also be translated to saying, where do I even start? Where do I even start? Meaning this injury was so brutal, experienced doctors didn't even have a clue on what to do. The victim then ended up passing away two days after this freak accident. I don't recommend you go searching for this video because it's definitely one of the worst accident videos online. This video is absolutely horrific and may this boy rest in peace. I've had so many comments asking me to cover this case and I can't put it off any longer. This is the horrific case of Lacey Fletcher and it's up there with one of the most horrific cases of neglect that I've ever come across. Just a quick trigger warning, there is a picture of the couch mentioned in this comment and it's not a pretty sight. So if you are squeamish, I suggest you just scroll on by. Lacey lived with her parents, Clay and Sheila, in a town called Slaughter in Louisiana. She first started showing signs of Aspergus at a very young age, and when she was in ninth grade, her parents pulled her out of school. Lacey didn't have a primary doctor, but Claire and Sheila did attend a doctor's appointment where they expressed their concerns about Lacey. They told the doctor that she was becoming more and more reclusive and refused to leave the house. What's strange is they didn't ask the doctor to come to the house to speak to Lacey, and they made no attempt to get Lacey to come to the doctor's appointment with them. Over the years, many medical professionals urged Claire and Sheila to take Lacey to hospital for treatment, but it never happened and she never received any medical treatment. Lacey was forced to live in that house with her parents for years and years. And then finally, in January 2022, when Lacey was 36, 
Sheila rang 911 and told them that her daughter had stopped breathing. Paramedics and law enforcement were not prepared for what they found when they entered that house. Just a quick trigger warning again here, the picture is coming up. Lacey's body was discovered partially naked, sitting upright in this sunken crevice on the living room couch. She was covered in urine and had faeces on her face, chest and abdomen. She was also covered in maggots and insect bites. She was extremely malnourished, weighing just 96 pounds, and she had severe sores and ulcers on her body, some of which went down to the bone. She also tested positive for COVID-19. It was clear to the authorities straight away that this was a severe case of neglect. Despite the fact that Lacey was 36, she was also a really vulnerable woman. As well as Asperger's, she had severe social anxiety, and it was also discovered that she'd been suffering from locked-in syndrome which can cause paralysis of the muscles and joints. It's thought that Lacey hadn't left this couch for at least 10 years. Clay and Sheila had made absolutely no attempts to get help for their daughter over the years, and when they were questioned by police, they told them that it was Lacey's choice to live on that couch and that there was nothing that they could have done. Clay and Sheila were arrested and they were charged with second degree murder. However, in June this year, the judge tossed out those charges and they've been re-indicted on first degree murder charges. Their trial is set to begin later this year. This schoolboy stabbed his teacher to death in front of a classroom full of students. 61 year old Anne Maguire was a Spanish teacher teaching in Leeds. She'd actually worked at the school for 40 years and she was only five months off retirement. However, in April 2014, something absolutely horrific happened. One of her students was 15 year old Will Cornick. He'd always been described as a smart student who never really caused any trouble. Classmates regarded him as a polite student, but after he got diagnosed with diabetes, his personality seemed to change. In 2013, he tried to join the army, but because of his diagnosis, he was rejected. Being in the army had been his dream, so this was really upsetting for him. After failing to complete his Spanish homework, he was given detention by Anne. He also expressed a wish to her that he wanted to drop Spanish, but she wouldn't let him, which only angered him more. He began to develop a deep-rooted grudge against Anne. Shockingly, he reportedly messaged his friends on Facebook asking if one of them would kill her for him for £10. During one school day, halfway through his Spanish class, Will decided to get up and attack Anne with a knife. The classmates watched on in horror as he chased her out of the classroom. When there, another teacher heard her screams and tried to shield Anne from any more blows from him. Will then allegedly returned to his class and told his classmates how it was a shame that he hadn't killed her. However, Anne did actually pass away from her injuries. Will later admitted that he did plan also to kill two other teachers. One of them was actually pregnant at the time. He's been sentenced to life in prison with a minimum of 20 years. disturbing case of the child who killed a child. In July 2018, six-year-old Alicia McPhail was abducted from her bed. She'd been staying with her grandparents in the Isle of Butte. She'd gone to sleep watching Peppa Pig and no one had any idea of the horrors that would unfold that evening. Meanwhile, 16-year-old Aaron Campbell was drinking with friends at his house. Aaron apparently became upset in the night because he had been arguing with his mum. He had had a challenging upbringing involving physical and emotional abuse. Aaron decided that that evening he wanted to get some substances to smoke from a couple that he knew. The couple in question were Alicia's dad, Robert, and his girlfriend. They'd been known to sell substances to Aaron previously, but he could not get hold of them. Intending to go and steal them off them, Aaron armed himself with a knife. He headed to Robert's house where he lived with his parents and girlfriend. This was obviously where Alicia was staying that evening. When he arrived at the house, he noticed the six-year-old sleeping in her bed and took the opportunity to snatch the poor defenseless young child. Disgustingly, he carried her to a secluded location, essayed her and then killed her. He then disposed of his clothes in the sea. At 6am the next day, Alicia's grandparents woke up to discover that the little girl was missing. They straight away alerted police and locals. When the family asked Aaron to keep an eye out for the little girl, he texted them back saying, oh damn, I'm sure she's not went too far. 
A local man soon discovered Alicia's lifeless body around 15 minutes away from her house. Along with a lot of the local community, Aaron's mum actually checked her CCTV of her house. She was hoping that this would help with the investigation and it definitely did. She saw her son leaving and returning from the house that night and she handed the evidence over to police. Aaron was arrested and it was discovered that the clothes that he'd abandoned on the beach did actually match with his DNA. This case made me terrified to go to the cinema. This is the case of the horror in Screen 9. James Holmes was raised in California. His mum was a nurse and his dad was a scientist. From a young age, he was experiencing night terrors and allegedly actually tried to take his own life when he was just 11 years old. He was apparently obsessed with guns and weapons and had dreamed of becoming a mass murderer. Between May and July 2012, he legally bought four guns. Background checks were conducted and he was allowed the weapons. He also bought spike strips, which if you don't know, pop the tires of cars if they chase after you. On July the 19th, just hours before tragedy would unfold, James mailed his notebook to his psychiatrist. Inside the notebook, James detailed his plans to kill. The notebook was actually discovered later on undelivered. Just prior to entering a cinema in Aurora, James rang a crisis line to tell them about his plans to kill. However, the call was disconnected after just nine seconds. At the midnight showing of The Dark Knight Rises, CCTV captures James walking into the cinema. He walks into screen nine, props open the door and then walks back out again. Shockingly, he goes to his car and gets guns out and gas canisters. He re-entered the screen at about 12.38 p.m. and set off two gas canisters. When he entered screen nine again, he immediately opens fire on the audience, instantly killing 10 people. Two others later died in hospital from their injuries. An additional 70 people were injured. This was an absolutely packed out cinema. James also shot at people as they scrambled to exit the screen. His youngest victim was a six-year-old girl. Witnesses said this all unfolded as there was actually a gunfight on the screen and initially they all thought it was special effects and just part of the film. Police were actually on the scene very quickly after the first 911 call. James surrendered to the police and was arrested in the car park. He was apparently very, very calm when he was arrested and told police that he had booby trapped his apartment. When police investigated his apartment, this was found out to be true. He was sentenced to 12 consecutive life sentences.